Today, I'm going to tell you about three books that changed my life. What's up guys, Flo Siflok, not most people. Um, I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of free time on my hands lately, and while I love binge watching Netflix and trying to impregnate all the women in my Sims 4 neighborhood, I also gotta do some stuff so I don't feel like a complete piece of human garbage. Reading is one of the best things that I know how to do to counteract that feeling and whatnot, and to combat it. So I thought I'd go over a list of books that changed my life. Now, all the books that I talk about in this video, there will be links to them in the description of this video. Obviously, it's YouTube, it's 2020, y'all know that, but I'm gonna say it anyway, just so you know. You know what I mean? You may have noticed Vintage Ty is not behind the camera, and don't worry. These videos will be in addition to the content Vintage Ty and I make together as not most people, so you're still gonna get those videos. Don't worry about that, they're coming. Um, that being said, why don't you do us a favor? Hit like, hit subscribe, hit comment. If you wanna support the channel, head on over to darkmedicine.com and pre-order our newest t-shirt. We just drop. It's a super sick design inspired by vintage country music merch that we had our friend Sam uh, that we had our friend Sam Bergini whip up for us. Um, I'm trying to sell 500 of these fuckers, so if you can help me reach that goal, I'd appreciate it. All right, let's get into this video. <laughs> Confessions of an Advertising Man by David Ogilvy. Um, this first book might not seem very applicable to your life, but if you are in any way, shape, or form a creative person trying to make a living off of like being creative. I assure you that it is. Or even if you're just someone trying to build a business or like a personal brand or whatever, you're gonna learn a fucking ton from this book. But the first thing you're probably wondering is, who the heck is David Ogilvy? Um, David Ogilvy was an advertising genius, Scottish dude, worked on Madison Avenue in New York back in the day. Uh, many people consider him the father of modern day advertising. People like to say the character of Don Draper in Mad Men was based on Ogilvy. Um, I think inspired, or like people like Ogilvy and like that whole era that he exhibited inspired Mad Men just in general. Uh, and that would be a better word for it. But you know, that's still pretty epic. You know what I mean? So why did this book change my life? Mm, it really made me rethink what it meant to be creative. And it gave me a lot of confidence to be creative. And it made me really view my creativity as something that is valuable, that has value. And that is just amazing. The book is just like full of like nuggets of wisdom from like Ogilvy about different ways to do things. And he may be talking about this totally different thing, but you'll see something and you're like, oh, that would totally work in this other part of my life or whatever. Uh, it's super dope. There's things in here like, I mean, it's just... Nuggets of wisdom from his years of experience. And that's one of the things I enjoy most about reading is that I get to save all the time that other people spent experiencing these things. I get to, I get to, you get to skip over all that time and just download it into my brain by reading it. So here is some good ones. So we got, and I kind of just went through this and looked at some shit. So we got page 36, number four. I admire people who work with gusto. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, I beg you to find another job. Remember the Scottish proverb, be happy while you're living, for you're a long time dead. And that's a good one. And then we also got page 116, numero 10. Every advertisement should be thought of as a contribution to the complex symbol, which is the brand image. If you take that long view, a great many day-to-day -day problems solve themselves. I mean, if you think about that, that is, that is just immensely profound. And the whole thing is just like every page you could like pick out something and be like, that is profound. That just blew my mind. Another one he says is your audience isn't stupid. They're your wife. Treat them with the same respect that you treat your wife, you know? And that's insane. I, I mean, I even find myself guilty of that. Cause if, if I read like my worst comments and I start assuming that my entire audience is, 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 is that dumb as like my worst comments. I don't actually think that, but it, it's easy for me to sometimes like slip into that and start talking like, because I assume that everyone is as stupid as like the worst commenter, when that's not true at all. Y'all are super smart and I need to treat you like that and respect you because that's one of the reasons that I even have an audience is that we've built like this mutual respect. And a lot of it might even be self-obvious, but it's just like kind of seeing it written down is like a good reminder. The book is, is immense. The, the things talked about in the book are immensely applicable to social media. Most of the rules that he makes for older forms of advertising hold true when applied to like modern times. 
uh, it, just with like tiny minor shifts in, in perspective, it's easy to see how things that he described for print media, which is now kind of pretty much a dead form, those same principles ring true within, let's say, Instagram stories. And so th there's a lot of jumps that can be made from things he said. There's also a bulk of anecdotes about getting clients, managing people, uh, business etiquette, his failures and like what lessons he learned from his failures, you know, folky wisdom. And they all kind of clearly illustrate effective strategies to deal with a lot of issues that come with being like a professional creative person. And I go back to this book over and over again. Also this whole section on how to write effective copy and it'll blow your wig back if you let it. Um, you might not be familiar with what copy is, like most of you are, or some of you might not be, but if you've ever written like an Instagram caption, you've written copy would be the best way for me to describe it shortly. It's all been hella helpful building out my own personal brand, AKA not most people. And I feel like most people that are trying to like, even like if you're like a rapper or if you're like a tattoo artist or like whatever the fuck you are, you're just trying to sell your fucking like clothes or some shit. Uh, I feel like most people in the modern day would gain a lot of insight in general just by reading Ogilvy. You know, in other words, to paraphrase, you know, get a little cliff notes, Ogilvy is that big fuego. That big fuego. I'm going to go on to this next book, right? A lot of self-help advice seems pretty obvious when you hear it, but just because something is obvious doesn't always mean that you actually do it. I mean, we do a lot of things that we know we shouldn't do. One of the things I like about like self-help guys is they're like this constant reminder of best practices for life. It's like a drum beat, like a boom, 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 that kind of just like, you're kind of like, oh yeah, I need to be doing that. I need to be doing that. Oh, what's this over here? Oh, no, don't look at that. You gotta be doing that. You gotta be doing that. You gotta be positive, you gotta be po And it doesn't matter that I do everything, like little bullshit thing that they say, but like keeping all the stuff at the forefront of my mind just has like a hella positive impact on my life. and it, keeps me on track, it keeps my balls from going in the gutter as it were. It just like reinforces like attitudes and ideas that just kind of guarantee success in some way. And that is why the second book on my list is Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins or Anthony Robbins as he was called when this book was written. It's the new science of personal achievement. I think a lot of people are super skeptical of Tony Robbins, almost like rightfully so because he is like the quintessential like self-help guru and he's like an archetype that has been lampooned like countless times in pop culture. He spawned dozens of imitators. You know, a lot of like, this is his first book, I think. And a lot of like what he's done since writing this book is kind of like his own hustle. You know, uh, a huge part of Tony Robbins' gig is his hustle, you know, getting people to go to his seminars and pay money and whatever. And I can't knock the man for that. You gotta get that bag, you know? You gotta get that bag. In my opinion, all that jazz of like seminars and shit of his isn't super necessary as this book has almost all the useful and like timeless ideas you would need to make like a massive change in your life. I think a lot of people don't actually understand the shit that gets said in this book and maybe they, they're just like taking it at face value or they take it too seriously and they think that they need Tony Robbins or are just like so shut off that they don't get it or I don't know, it doesn't work for them. I think I said that twice, fuck it, whatever. Like the thing is a lot of this advice has been said a lot of times in a lot of different places and a lot of it's like super obvious and it's a lot of it shit you already know but you don't take that seriously and Tony Robbins has compiled it all in a super digestible manner. Uh, for me personally, I was in a super low place in 2012, 2013. I was living in the French Quarter in New Orleans and working at a fancy strip club. I had a beautiful apartment and girls and whatever, but I was taking like 90 milligrams of Adderall a day. I was drinking nonstop, doing coke, taking benzos to sleep. My whole life revolved around drinking and doing drugs. I ate every meal out. Like I'd spend like $15 like three times a day or twice a day because I was, you know, couldn't eat, couldn't eat one of the meals, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'd spend like $30, $40, $50, $60 a day on food because I just eat out. And yeah, like I was making a lot of money in my job, especially for like a 26 year old, but I was spending it all to support like my wild lifestyle. And on my days off, before I'd go out drinking, whatever, I'd just read books all day. And my favorite bookstore was in New Orleans was on uh, Dauphine Street, it's called Dauphine Street Books. I just go there and buy stacks of books at a time. That guy was the homie. I even like kicked it with him a few times, like the owner, he's super, like 
super like quiet reserved dude but he was chill one of the books i bought one of those times was this old ass copy of unlimited power and i got super into it like let me remind you i was on hella adderall so i did all the different exercises and wrote notebooks and got like super neat and organized with it and just took it super fucking serious and then after a month or two of doing that i got super discouraged and i listened to that little voice in my head that was going this shit is for suckers you are stupid for thinking this bullshit would work and i tossed the book into a pile and i forgot about it you know what i mean but at that point it was too late it had already planted a bunch of ideas in my head and my life drastically started to change from that point forward. And then this funny thing happened. Almost every goal that I set to myself during that month period came true. It came, it all came true over the course of the next seven years in like really weird roundabout ways, including getting completely sober from drugs and alcohol in 2015. I don't know how to explain it because I literally thought the book was bullshit but I somehow subconsciously implanted all these ideas in my mind and worked, and it worked without me even being cognizant of it. <laughs> I went from being a strip club bouncer to being a copywriter at a streetwear company, <laughs> like a really cool one too. And everything that has happened since that point has added up to me being happy and successful now. So I've decided to take the time in quarantine to like really revisit the book and incorporate that stuff into my life even more because I'm really curious to see what will happen if I just take it seriously and it's not something that's kind of in the back of my head all the time. Some of the stuff, some some parts in this book, like the stuff on neuro-linguistic programming, it's long been disproven as pseudoscience, uh, which I didn't know at the time I read the book, but honestly, my experience with the book was so wild, I don't even care, it worked for me. The other crazy thing, I spent a dollar on this book. I spent one dollar. This book is like everywhere and you should just read it if you want your life to get better and take the parts you like and leave out the parts you don't like. All right, on to the next one. This last book, I was gonna talk about a different book, but a few people recommended that I not talk about the book that I wanted to talk about and I kind of saw where they're coming from. But this is the book that got me to the book that I want to talk about, but I can't talk about it because if I talk about that other book, and then I was to go out tomorrow and smoke a bunch of crack, you might say that that book didn't work and that wouldn't, that wouldn't be true. So I can't talk about that other book. Enough of that. This book is great. It's called A Drinking Life. It's by Pete Hamill. Pete Hamill evokes a New York that exists today only in memory. Read it and you feel the asphalt sticking to your shoes in a summer stickball game in the cooling shower of an open fire hydrant. It's about this dude that grew up in Brooklyn and became a writer. He was an Irish dude. He had a really gnarly drinking problem and he quit drinking you know, after years of like fucking his life up. He did it without any help. He did it with his own willpower, which is something I found that I can't do. Like I needed like some help uh, just quitting drinking and stuff. Even just this book showing that it was possible for someone to like live. And, and the way he described growing up, like drinking with like the older dudes in his neighborhood. Like I drank with the older dudes in my neighborhood and there was like kind of tough guys that like I looked up to that I thought were super badass and I wanted to be like them. And that whole thing, like I super duper like related to or whatever. And I just related to so much in this book. But the idea that he, he got sober and his life got better really implanted the idea in my mind that I didn't. And I don't know, like it wasn't like I was like waking up and like, hiding liquor around the house or like whatever but I was just like 26 I lived in New Orleans every night I went out you know I drank beers all the time you know it was just like I never said no to drugs <laughs> it's like you know maybe I'd say no to heroin but I'm not like saying if someone someone's like here take the Xanax I'd be like oh shit word yep yeah, uh or something you know what I mean seeing that someone was sober this book like really inspired me to start trying to get sober knowing that it was like something possible and within reach and then that took me down this whole other odyssey that brought me to a place where I realized that I don't have to I don't have to waste my time worrying about things that I have no control over you got like it's like you know people get all mad about Donald Trump and don't get me wrong like the guy's an idiot like I can't believe he's president and I just put him on this shelf of things I can't control Donald Trump boom can't control that I'm just not gonna fucking worry about it like what can I do instead? Well, I can vote next time. You know what I mean? I can do whatever. You know, other things I can't control. I, can, I can't control what you think about me. Someone's going to take that. I'm going to put that on the shelf. And I didn't learn that from this book, but this book set me on an odyssey where I got to this point of immense personal freedom and peace. And almost everything good in my life from my girlfriend to this house to the business that I have to like... The YouTube channel to my friendship with Vintage Tie, everything to my family fucking with me again. It all comes from 
comes from me reading this book and starting on that Odyssey. Um, I'm gonna make more videos like this. Um, some of them might be more funny, like some of them might be serious. It's just gonna be me talking. I got a dope setup for it, so I'm gonna do more YouTube-y, youtuber -y videos, because I've always wanted to do that and I didn't have the setup to do it, and now I do, so I'm super stoked on that. Follow me on Instagram, you know, like, subscribe, comment. Buy a shirt from Dark Medicine. I'm trying to sell 500 of those fuckers, so you better go buy one. They're super dope. Not most people, just go out there and rep it, be the coolest kid in your quarantine. And we out. Ba 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 